All right, so today we're gonna talk about recce and recce cars. Um, give them a quick on what a recce is, like just real simple. Well, recce is short for reconnaissance. It's uh, when the organizer of the rallies allow us competitors to drive down the stages, but it has to be done uh, when the roads are open, two days before the event and uh, in standard road cars. So it's something that is critical for the rally and that's how we create what we call the pace notes, what the co-driver then calls to the driver during the rally. So last year, Hoonigan Racing Division took three Kona end lines and converted them into dedicated rally recce cars. And uh, that's what you guys got to use. And they had everything from chainsaws to charcuterie boards in the back. And this was a little piece that was put together last year. This is a kind of extended edit uh, for you guys to watch now. And we just figured with everything kind of being very finite around the content we've made with Ken, we wanted to give you guys everything we have. So enjoy. So you're probably wondering why I'm out here in a field. Uh, it's Northern Pennsylvania. I'm actually here for a rally, STPR, and I wanna learn some stuff about rally. I've only seen stuff go flat out. Like, that's what you see inside the cars, but I don't know anything about pace notes, what it takes to get there, and I have a special teacher today. Danger Dan, welcome to Pennsylvania. Hi. You are Danger Dan. I am. <laughs> you are Ken Block. <laughs> <laughs> You've actually never been around any of my rally stuff. Never. Really, we're here to talk about these things, which is a recce card. Do you know what recce is? I would guess that it's for like reconnaissance, right? Yeah. Like, is that what? Very good, very good. A lot of people probably don't know this, but Hyundai's been really committed to the WRC in the past five years, running a factory team in the World Rally Championship at the top level. So they make a Rally 1 car, which is the top level, and a Rally 2 car, which is the second tier level. And at the top level, they've got, uh, in the past five years, 41 wins, 104 podiums. So they've been killing it. Oh, and two manufacturer titles also. It's a bit of information that's really quite, quite impressive. And on top of that too, they've actually had an American factory team back in the day too, that won a bunch of titles and a bunch of races here in America also. So that's, one of the reasons why you know we brought one in here to America, and that's what I've been racing this year. It's been good. We've been going back and forth. I've had some crazy luck this year. I've had one big crash, but we've had, like I said, three wins. And we've actually had two rallies where it went down to the last stage, and I lost the lead on the last stage. One because of a deer. No! And the other one because of dust. And right five plus. Ooh. Oh, shit. So why are these here? Wait, this is not the rally car. This is the car that we have to use to drive down all the stages, basically to write our pace notes to then race the stages on. Typically the races for a national round like here in America are Friday and Saturday, but I have to show up on Monday. And the reason being is I normally have a, a test on Tuesday then we recce all day Wednesday and sometimes Wednesday and Thursday and then we race Friday, Saturday. So there's a lot that goes on that entire week and we need a car like this to go out and do that recce. So you have a Hyundai Kona inline and I see it's fairly stock, right? It's yeah, just a couple it's got a few little modifications, but in its stock form, it's pretty good. But it's a, a very nice production car and it's set up for us to do exactly what we need to do. Alex and I need to create the notes that are gonna be able to let us go flat out down these stages and try to win. But we have to, we have to drive the roads. We get a minimum of two passes. Sometimes we'll, we may get a third if time allows. And so the idea is that we go out and we drive the road roads once. Uh, we either get Jemba notes from the organizer or we're writing them from scratch. Pace notes themselves are basically every straightaway, every corner, every dangerous bit, every jump. We're making some sort of note from that. Big jump. And I have to hear that on race day and not think about it. It has to be completely subconscious right. that when Alex says right six into left four, I know that a six is a flat out corner mm -hmm. and four is a slightly slower corner and I have to be able to react and drive the car right. at its limit through those through those uh, situations. That's the basic idea of recce and recce notes. The simplest thing to kind of wonder why we have this is that to go through an entire day of doing recce, we need to get it done and get it done really well. Yeah. Is this required? Do you do you have to go out and drive this? Uh, it, it is not required, but it 
If you were to try and race a rally to try and win and you're doing it completely blind without recce, it'd be very difficult. I know you said that people can have a puncture or get stuck out there. Like you bring tools, right? So there is a, a kit inside this car that we have for all that stuff, along with the co-driver's kit that he has to record and do everything we need to do the recce the stages. This is a basic production car, very nice one, the inline from Hyundai. Yeah. So let's have you run through the specs of what this is, and then we'll dive into the details of what we've added to make it a recce car. All right, sounds good. So the cars we have behind me are the Hyundai Kona Inline. And you may have noticed there's three of them. It's one for Lucy, one for Leah, and one for Ken. Let me show you around these new Hyundais. First off, we have the Rotiform LASR with Open Country AT3 by Toyo Tires. Underneath the hood of this thing, we have a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine that puts out 198 horsepower to four wheels. It's all wheel drive. We have an upgraded bumper with enhanced aerodynamics. Let's go check out the inside. And inside we have a spacious interior with some red stitching, really cool badges and whatever Alex put in here. To the trunk. Uh, what is this? <laughs> what, you don't know what that is? I know exactly what these things are. This is something familiar to me. This is spare stuff. Any downtime that we have uh, during recce because there's an issue is time we're missing out of being on the stages. Nice big jack here, you know, refill tank there, lots of tools. As you can see, some nice basic setup here. So impact. Yep, light. So next set, just a nice Sonax full kit. In the bottom case here, a lot of tools for a little of everything. You never know what you might need to deal with. Zip ties, screwdrivers, needle nose pliers, ratchet set. So right here, a very dangerous spot for me being tall. We've got a breaker bar. And a full size spare. Yeah, and a full size spare. Basically set up so that we can get the stuff out, get the repair done quick. Get moving. So another important feature that's not here right now, our chefs have it, is a nice cooler. So we have to bring plenty of food and drinks. So we have a nice cooler that sits in the back there. Is this setup different than in any of these cars? Like everything? No, they have all the basic same kit. Uh, the one difference between the three cars is the wheels. So we have these nice rotiforms on my car. Leah's is a Motegi RF11 and Lucy's is a Motegi track light. Do they get to choose their wheels and color? No. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're going to this other side of the car and you're gonna hear all the details of that, we gotta bring in Alex, cause he's gonna explain that way better than me. Hey, nice to meet you. So Alex Josemino, he's been my co-driver. He's done every rally with me, I think, but three. It's been uh, 121 rallies together. There is a, a lot of work, precise work that goes behind the scenes of uh, uh, creating the pace notes and organizing the reconnaissance and, and testing and all that. So uh, it's a little bit like the military, you know, there is a lot of precision in our sport. It looks like out of control in the forest, but it's very much in control right. in the car between the driver and co-driver and the work that we do with the pace notes. Well, let's dive into his side of the car because Alex brings a special setup of camera, distance recording unit, GPS, all that sort of stuff for every rally. It's a very nice setup and he can explain kind of everything that he sets up and why. So let's go here to the side of the car. Show me some of these tools and tricks that you have. Oh, it's just a couple extra items that we add to, you know, what already is in the car. Uh, one is a trip meter. That's a professional GPS trip meter because we measure everything we do. So, and obviously we record every stage, first, second, third pass. When we do the third passes with just a simple camera. And then when we go back to the hotel, we can uh, review the stages and further, you know, change and amend the pace notes. So then you basically start reading the notes and you have something to, to look at. Correct, yeah. And camera technology, the last 10 years has gone advanced so much. So that's an, a tool that where we can gain a lot of, lot of feedback because we're limited by the number of passes we can do. That's almost like taking another couple passes, right? So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's critical. Yeah. And it's funny, it's so critical that the, Alex actually has another setup where he has two cameras set up. So in case one fails, he has another one simply right there. So then with the GPS, like, 
how do you record it? Like, what, what does it record to? Are you reading that? Is well, that's the thing about routing. You don't record a, a route through a GPS like you do, let's say, in Baja 1000, like yeah. we did last year. And routing is pretty much old school. You have pen and paper. So the, the rest of my tools are my, in my code driver bag where I have pencils and paste notebooks where actually on the first pass when Ken calls me the paste notes, I write them down by hand. So yeah. it sounds like a primitive way of doing it, but it's like we said before, it's the most reliable and it needs to be 100% reliable. Yeah. And pen and paper is 100% reliable. Like how do you write legibly enough to know when you're bouncing around in here? Well, this is for example, the paste notes from uh, the last test that we did uh, in Minnesota. So. One secret to write neatly is to write bigger and you have to write bigger because you know I'm reading these pace notes in a very bouncy environment you know you, the last thing you want those notes to become blurry in your eyes so as you see it's a special, specialized pace notebook it's got a very hard you know and I write the pace notes uh, by pencil uh, because it can be easily erased and changed but uh, that's that's what I'm reading in uh, high speed in the forest flat out so it's just um, the information is on this page. How are you with like flipping pages? Because you still have to be wearing gloves and stuff. No, I don't wear the code driver doesn't wear gloves. But there is a there is a strategy. You know, when you are halfway through the page, you you actually lick your fingers you and to, right? and then you triple check that you are only flipping one page. And then you when you get to the end, this you, is happening in split seconds. Correct. Right? If you skip one, that's terrifying. That's right. Uh, it could be a crash. Is there something that you know positively to be on the right page? Like you're just checking multiple times. That's right. So your yeah. fingers are really tired. Of Correct. And you, when you're reading the, the pace notes, you're actually scrolling with your fingers, you know, yeah. through the lines. Then you get to the end. You already have the page ready, one page to go. And then you move to the next, you know, and scroll with your fingers.